Well, I guess we'll begin then by uh, just talking a bit about the City to City program, mm -hmm. if that's all right. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the way into that that I wanted to talk about it was uh, maybe just the idea of, of national cinema. Mm -hmm. um, you know, is this a, a term that you find useful or take issue with or going from there? Uh, okay, I think that um, the last years are very good for the national, for the Greek cinema. Many movies uh, have uh, their premiere in uh, festivals like uh, Berlin, Cannes, and uh, Venice, etc. So um, last years, uh, I, I think that now we have a national cinema, something that it, it is very good. Uh, but uh, in, inside this uh, national cinema, there are many directors, and uh, every director has its style. So it's not that uh, national cinema means that uh, all the Greek movies ha it's the same and have the same uh, style and the same uh, uh, form, etc. Uh, so I believe in national cinema, but uh, I think that uh, every director has its personality and its character and it, its his style. Yes, I, I, um, I interviewed uh, Athena Rachel Sangari recently, and she said a, a similar thing that you actually can't can't speak of a you know of a national cinema. That there are rather um, you can't speak of a, a school mm -hmm. of Greek yes, cinema, yes. and that it is so diverse. Yes, I think that, um, uh, for example, uh, in Romania. You can speak uh, more for a national c cinema that there is a style in all the Romanian movies, which is very specific. So you can uh, talk about national cinema easier. In Greece, I think that yes, there are some movies who has the same style, but uh, not all of the movies has the same styles. And there are many many directors. Mm -hmm. uh, young, etc., who ha have uh, their personal style. Mm -hmm. and the, and as you said, the past few years have seen this, you know, the, the new Greek cinema. Mm -hmm. is, yeah, uh, weird. <laughs> yes, yeah, and it's become this uh, yeah, sort of a favorite on the, on the festival circuit, but it's not as though there never was a, a Greek cinema before. Do you feel that in, in these kind of national retrospectives, would there be a place for, for showing um, other films, like films from 10 years ago, 15 years ago, mm -hmm, 50, mm -hmm. 20, 50 years ago, is that something that you... Yes, I think that there, there are films that uh, um, there is a sense to, to see them. Um, it's not so many films, but there are. I think that everybody knows uh, Theodoros Angelopoulos, who was a very famous uh, filmmaker, but uh, there are others as well. Uh, like Nikolaidis, Panagiotopoulos, etc., etc., Panusopoulos. Mm -hmm. And I think that, uh, yes, you have to see all these films of uh, 80s or 70s or 90s. Mm -hmm. But not all of them, of course, <laughs> but uh, yes, they're very, very nice films. Mm -hmm. Yes, I feel sometimes the, the yeah speaking with uh, you know other other directors mm -hmm. too. There's a bit of a, a tension when it's sort of this one a spotlight is set on one national cinema and mm -hmm. it's you know whether or not how, if that's fleeting or not. Um, is this something you're concerned of? You know that in two years it'll be a new a new national cinema will be the new focus or. You know, the I think that uh, this that happens now in Greece it's not a trend. Mm -hmm. It's something very serious, and there are many talented directors, so I'm not uh, uh, worried about uh, this, that uh, in two years some, maybe another country will come, and uh, Greece is not... Uh, no, I, I'm not uh, afraid of it, because I think that uh, it's not a trend. Right. I think that uh, it is established now. Right, yes. And the... There's a, I suppose, to or what I was thinking of as well is when it comes under focus, there comes to be sort of expectations as well, mm -hmm. um, and what mm -hmm. audiences mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. want. Mm -hmm. um, and do you ever feel limited? Like, oh, if you're a Greek fi filmmaker, you must make a film in this way. Yes, yes, <laughs> I understand what you say. Yes, it works a bit like that. It's not only the audience; it's uh, the festivals as well, because. Yes. I think that now the festival uh, have uh, some expectation about a Greek film. They expect to be something like weird, uh, something like a dog tooth or I don't know what. And uh, when you are a filmmaker, of course, you, all these things uh, press you. Uh, but 
I think it is a, for a bit. It's it's a bit. It's not a, it's not for a long time. I think that uh, you find uh, that everybody finds his style, so it's okay. Mm -hmm. And I suppose too, there's the. Um, I want to talk about funding as well because mm -hmm. when there is, it's becoming so global, you know, that it's not as though very rarely now a film will be solely financed by one country. So even mm -hmm. to say a film comes from one place mm -hmm. when, you know, money comes from everywhere, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. is national cinema, does it even mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. exist anymore? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, for example, now for the Greek movies, it's uh, easier to find uh, f funding for, for other countries, for Germany or for France. Uh, it is easier than it was uh, five years ago. And I think uh, it's uh, because of this trend of the Greek cinema, mm -hmm. it's easier to make co-productions now. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is very good because it's very difficult to find money in Greece. Uh, because of the crisis and of all this situation, it's very difficult. Uh, there is no money for the civilization. Uh, so it's good that now we can find uh, financing from other countries. And is there ever then, an, uh, again, that sort of pressure that we spoke about in terms of you know, festival programming of, mm -hmm. you know, you have to make this kind of film to get in. If you're getting money from, you know, what a, you know, some, uh, another European mm -hmm, nation mm -hmm, might mm -hmm. think a Greek film should be, is this something that, that you're concerned about? Yes, I think that um, um, all, uh, all the produce, producer, all the co-production companies, uh, they want a film from Greece that has to say something about the crisis. Right. <laughs> this is something strange because, um, Okay, the, the crisis is one thing, but uh, it is another thing uh, what the director wants to say, because it's not only the crisis. <laughs> um, and uh, I, I heard a story about uh, a director who had the script who has nothing to do with the crisis, and the German co-producer co wanted to have some elements right. in the script about the crisis. So. <laughs> And was it added in in the end? Was it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, but I think this is, uh, you know, when we talk about, um, when we talk about national cinema, and it is usually comes up at, at festivals, I think largely mm -hmm. it's, a, it's an easy way to categorize things. Mm -hmm. But then, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. there's limits then placed on what we see then as well, I think. Yes, yes. Yeah. I think that uh, all the people who have a relation with the cinema, or producers or uh, uh, journalists, uh, all these people uh, want to categorize the, the films, the, the countries. It's easier for them. Mm -hmm. So we have Greek cinema, we have Romanian cinema, we have uh, the Greek cinema is weird. Yes, I think it, this, make, uh, this makes their job uh, easier. But uh, it's not the truth. And do you then feel uh the need to react against that? In any way, so. No, I need, I need to make films, <laughs> just that. <laughs> well, and you made, uh, th this film was made with uh, a new tax credit, I believe, and also crowdfunding, is that yes. a bit of both? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, not, about, not with crowdfunding, because we want to do it, but uh, at finally we didn't have the time. Uh, but yes, with this, uh, uh, new law about taxes, um, but unfortunately, uh, I used this law, but I was the only one that I did because the law was very bad. Um, you know, it, it wasn't. Um, it was very um, uh, bad uh, written, mm -hmm. and uh, nobody trusts this law. So, because of the crisis and because of all this situation, nobody cares to to make the law truth and to, to make the law to, to be um, to practices. Uh, so I was the only one, I was the first and the last one. So it is a bad story. It's not a good one. <laughs> not, yeah, not a sustainable model. For yes, it. yes, yes. Yeah. I think that uh, the government and uh, the Ministry of Economics uh, is not uh, ready to, it's, don't care about it. Yes, 
and, so, and it is no longer in existence and it was, it was or is it yes yes it is a, it's a, it's a very bad story <laughs> <laughs> sorry it's all right <laughs> it's not my fault no but, no not uh, at all you know it is a very difficult situation now mm -hmm. and uh, i think that uh, no they, they think that they have more serious things to do and more serious problems than to care about uh, this law right right yeah and uh, and then the the crowdfunding aspect, mm -hmm. which is of course this, I mm -hmm. guess what has mm -hmm. that's. Mm -hmm. I mean, people have always self-financed yes. films, but this is a new. Yes, it is a very difficult story in Greece as well, uh, because people have no money, so it's not so easy to to give uh, money for uh, for someone who want to have to do a movie or whatever or theatrical piece. So yes. We have this crowdfunding and we have, um, except of for Kickstarter and Indiegogo, etc. We have a Greek uh, crowdfunding company mm -hmm. as well. It, uh, it is one year now, but there is this company. But it's difficult. Mm -hmm. It's not so easy. The project that uh, reach the, the money that they want uh, are very, uh, not so much. Mm -hmm. right. um, and. Uh, well, is, you also came from the uh, Berlin Talent Lab as well, was mm -hmm. prior to mm -hmm. this. Um, we wonder if you could talk a bit about that experience and how it helped. And yes. yes, I was, uh, first of all, I was at the, at the Berlin Talent Campus at uh, 2007, mm -hmm. it was six years ago. Um, it was a very good experience. I was very young then and uh, I wasn't very... Um, uh, you know, I, I didn't know all things about uh, the industry and all this, so it w I wasn't so mature uh, these years. Uh, but now I'm in the Bernal residency, which is a very good experience um, there uh, for my new project. Mm -hmm. uh, Bernal residency is a very new thing. I think, oh, yes, uh, this year is the second year. But uh, they do it, and uh, they choose uh, six projects, six projects from all over the world, and uh, we are there in Berlin for three months in order uh, to develop our script and to find co-producers, and it is a very very good experience. Uh, I'm here in Toronto for three days, and I will be back uh, in Berlin. And uh, can, I was going to ask at the end about your new project, but we may as well talk about it now. Okay. Can you, yeah, can you no talk problem. about it at all? Or, or no, we can, yeah, if you can yes, talk about it Yes, uh, <clears throat> it is a um, script about uh, an 11 years old boy who comes from uh, an ex-Soviet country, maybe Russia, I don't know yet, Russia or Georgia, something like that, uh, comes to Greece in order to find his mother, who is in Greece and uh, she works, she's working in, uh, there and uh, they d haven't met each other for th for two years. Uh, so he's coming to find her and to live with her, but he doesn't know that uh, his mother has already married with an old Greek man. So uh, he discovered that, and uh, this is a family drama, but not exactly a family because this is not a family. And uh, this is a film about um, symbolic uh, violence and physical violence. And uh, in my mind, there is the, the symbolic violence that uh, the government and the state, with uh, its institutions like uh, uh, school or like religions, exercise to the people. Mm -hmm. And uh, on the other hand, there is the physical violence, the one that the people exercise. And I think that uh, the physical violence is the answer in the symbolic violence. It, it's something about that. Oh, and, that's, and there's similar themes in, in this film as well. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, it's, it's, you know, yes, it's, it's, yes, yeah. yes, 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 mm -hmm. yes, because the mass media is some... In um, my film that is in Toronto now, uh, the main character is a journalist, so... It is something, it, yes, it's similar in a way. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, well, maybe this is a good way to then start talking about the film that's actually here yes. as well. <laughs> we can move into that. Um, well, I, uh, it's a very much, uh, I suppose you could say it's a, it's a character piece. It's very much based mm -hmm. around um, uh, Christos, uh, we rehearsed this before and then I'm going to miss it. Glue. Stereo Glue. Stereo Glue. Stereo Glue. 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 Sorry, I'll work on my Greek, I'm sorry. Um, but yes, yeah, I was wondering uh, if you could talk a bit about, I mean, he was in, in Dogtooth as yes, well. Yes, he was the father. Yes, yeah. Um, perhaps about, uh, you know, if you had uh, came, uh, wrote the film with, or came up with the idea for the film with him in mind, or mm -hmm. how, at what point he came on board as well. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, I knew Christos because um, he played in a TV serial in which I was assistant director, mm -hmm. so I knew him personally, and uh, it, it is easier for me to approach him. Uh, so yes, I have him in my mind when uh, I wrote the script. Uh, I knew him, so when I finished the script, I gave it to him and uh, he read it and he loved it. He liked it very much. So we did it <laughs> together. Looks <laughs> <Thanks>, well. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, and maybe we can talk a bit too again about jumping back a little bit as we were touching on before you know the idea there isn't a Greek school um, but there is a I suppose because it is it's a smaller industry too so there mm -hmm. is this sense of not necessarily a sharing of actors but it's you know it's a smaller industry people know each other mm -hmm. um, can you talk about influences that that came uh, perhaps uh, from Greece if was it you know if it was something like dog tooth or Yorgos Lentimos or you know Athena Rachel Sangari as well or anything like this how that how that uh, informed your, your film, if they uh, did. The influence of... Uh, yes, yeah, either as, um, yes, yeah, if their films did. Or you can tell me, no, they didn't go away. So. Uh, okay, uh, I, I loved uh, their films. I loved uh, Dogtooth. Uh, I loved Dogtooth more than the others, but uh, I loved Alps and uh, Adenberg as well. Uh, I think that um, all these films uh, have uh, the same uh, sense of humor. I think that uh, this is an element uh, that it, it is common. And um, there is another film, uh, L of Babis Macridis, which has the same sense of humor too. And uh, I think that, in a way, it's not an influence, but yes, we have the same uh, sense of humor uh, and all this uh, absurd thing. Uh, but my influence wasn't from their films, it wasn't from uh, uh, Ulrich Seidel, mm -hmm. which is a very, it was one of my favorite directors, or Michael Haneke. So my influence was more these directors yeah, and yeah. their films. Yes. It also it reminded me of The Shining as well. Yeah, okay, of course, because uh, the main location is yes, the yeah, hotel. Yes, and there's the, the, and there's the, the yes, party scene yes, at the end, yes, which yes, seems yes, very, yes, yes, of yes, course, yes, of course, yes. Of yes, course, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, it is a direct uh, mm -hmm. um, reference. It's, when, it's interesting you mentioned, mentioned Seidel's off the also. Really, okay. Yeah, so we could, yes, but uh, it, it is that... Um, that very stark sense of humor because it, it mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. it is dark it is uh, surprisingly violent as well like these really sporadic acts that sneak up on you mm -hmm. um, but I, I suppose you mentioned too the the, uh, the word absurd and absurdity mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. talk I wonder if you could talk a bit about uh, that that sense of play in the film as well and and why you felt that was something you wanted uh, to capture as well in my film there is a a person, a man, who is uh, alone in a hotel. For me, <coughs> this uh, was um, a very good uh, opportunity to do many absurd things. Because when a man is, a, is, a, is a alone in a very big lo uh, location like a hotel, I, I thought, okay, what, uh, what, what uh, he will do? He's alone, he's nothing, he's, no, he, he's nobody to talk. Uh, so there are all these scenes in the swimming pool. Um, I don't know if you remember mm -hmm. them. Yeah. Uh, which, yes, there are, they have something absurd. And um, I like that. And um, 
all this, uh, I, don't, I don't know if you remember the, the song. Yes, yeah. It is something absurd as well. And uh, <clears throat> I, I think that um, it is absurd, but at the same time it is normal, because he's alone, so he don't know what to do. <laughs> Nobody watch him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's, uh, so it is absurd, but it is normal too. Yeah, so there's the, that sense of uh, blurring of you know, reality and, mm. and surrealism mm -hmm. as well, mm -hmm. which especially right. with yes. the, um, the French cooking classes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, it yeah. is the same thing. Mm -hmm. It is the same thing. Yes, I think that uh, it seems absurd, but um, if you think about it, he's alone, he has nothing to, to do, so he do all these absurd things. Well, but even the, the French cooking classes themselves start mm -hmm. as, you know, what you would expect on the, on the on the television, and then it turns into chemistry. Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Yeah. So I was wondering if you'd talk a bit about that that choice then too of. of, of yes, um, all this uh, molecular gastronomy. Mm -hmm. It is for me something like um, uh, lost luxury because. Um, in Greece, and I think everywhere, um, we have um, we, we had all these uh, things. We had the, all the money. We were very, um, you know, this um, everyday life was very um, uh, lifestyle and all these things. Um, so uh, the, um, the molecular gastronomy is something more than food. And um, it's something like lifestyle. Yeah. And um, the, the thing that I thought is that uh, he can't, uh, he, he, he tries to do it, he tries to, to do the molecular gastronomy, but he can't. So it is something like a, a luxury that uh, he can't have anymore. Yeah. That was the idea. There's, uh, you know, I don't want to classify or overclassify things or you know render them okay. simplistic no okay. but there's I do see a, a trend in, in a lot of, of um, a lot of Greek films that I see in contemporary Greek films of this blending of, um, of, sort of science and biology with uh, like ah. an observational sense you know ah, okay. where the person becomes you know this this um, like a specimen almost mm -hmm. am I projecting this onto everything here <laughs> okay I didn't think about it but <laughs> okay <laughs> I'm just being, you know an excited um, <laughs> wanting to read it into the film I guess but yeah um, but I mean when you were mentioning too of the idea of, of luxury and this is something that you know can no longer be had um, mm -hmm. you know we you said the, you know, the pressure to make a Greek crisis film, um, but this film does seem seem loaded in that in that way that it is directly addressing this. Yes, but not uh, directly addressing to the economical crisis. It for me it is um, about the social crisis, mm -hmm. and I think that the social crisis was before the economical. Right, it I was see. first. I think that uh, all these things with the money. Um, it's after. I think that uh, the, the crisis in the society, first of all. Right, and, it's, and, and you have that, I guess, that sense too. I hadn't, I hadn't thought about it that way of the, um, you know, he's watching all these old old tapes that he's mm -hmm. on this sort mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. rather vapid mm -hmm. morning show. Mm -hmm. of, mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. yeah, this sense of, I suppose, a, a devoid culture. Um, yes, I think that um, uh, most of the people in Greece, I think that it's not a Greek problem, I think that it's more universal. Mm -hmm. Most of the people in Greece, I will talk about Greece, um, they uh, are interested uh, in celebrities and in money and uh, they are not interested uh, in um, other things more serious, I don't know how to say it. And uh, so they only wanted to have money, to go to vacations, to have a very expensive car, and... And then the result is... Yes, yes. Yeah. yes. They are not interested in the more knowing something more spiritual. Right. Yeah. Well, and there is that the... Um, the reoccurring trope to the the beauty pageant mm -hmm, often mm -hmm, comes up, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and the film is is uh, you know the idea of projecting yourself and projecting an image is very mm -hmm, central mm -hmm, to the mm -hmm, film as mm -hmm, well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, that's exactly. Mm -hmm. 
can you talk a bit about that then as well and how that uh, I guess came into came to be so central uh, to the story then sorry how um, I was just wondering if you could elaborate a bit a bit on this idea of um, because it seems to work on so many different levels that there's a mm -hmm. sense of projecting mm -hmm. the person the sense of you know projecting, projecting the society yes yeah and then as well of film too of mm -hmm. these or of television all these things okay when uh, I first um, begin to write the script, I didn't have uh, all this uh, social uh, level in my mind. I just wrote a script about this person. But uh, when uh, I began to, um, to work uh, in the pre-production, and uh, I did some research and uh, all these things, I, 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 I saw the, the social level of the film, so, I decided to have some more elements in this way. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, I found uh, this. Uh, I found an archive about the New Year's Eve of uh, 2001 mm -hmm. uh, that uh, I I saw the archive and I saw the TV presenter. It was a TV presenter of. Uh, a very well-known TV presenter, but in uh, these years, nobody knows nothing about him nowadays. And I saw him to welcome uh, the new year, but at the same time to welcome the euro, because uh, of the difference of the hour, uh, Greece was the first uh, country who welcomed the euro. So for me it was very funny, uh, because um, now there is all this uh, discussion about uh, the exit of uh, Greece from the euro so it was something that uh, if you something like that if you one time you're first always you will be first we were, we were, we were the first to welcome the euro and maybe we will be the first to say goodbye <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I decided to include this element in the film and um, I decided that Antonis Parskevas was the presenter of uh, this evening, and uh, we saw him to welcome the Euro. So yes, uh, it is um, a scene that I decided to wrote in order to to have this social level. Wait, because that but in, first of all, in my mind, when I wrote the script, there wasn't uh, the social level. Mm -hmm. I discovered it in the but yes, I was gonna actually I was gonna ask about that that scene because he turns off the the uh, the New Year's Eve at hand the contempt or the mm -hmm. when that's happening and puts on the DVD of it to rewatch it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there's this uh, is it seemed very politically loaded. Like this was the it felt at least to me like the moment that was actually engaging directly with um, with the with the economic crisis. Mm -hmm. and, but, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's but the, for me, it's more of a social crisis. Right, right. But they seem so inextricably But they are connected, linked. yes. yes yeah. They are connected. Mm -hmm. Is there also then, is this sense of, um, well, I mean, eternal return, I'll get to that, but <laughs> <laughs> also of um, the impossibility of the return, too, of his, uh, you know, Antonio's continually rewatching himself. Mm -hmm. um, and he says he's going home at one point, he says, to, you know, goes back to spot, he lies to the woman, uh, or he says to the woman at the. Um, when he's leaving, the, the last time he was seen before he disappears, he says, I'm going home, I believe. The last scene uh, in the tunnel, no, you know? No, okay. sorry, the last time that he's seen within the story of the film, he tells the, uh, the woman in the parking lot that he's, that he's going home. Uh -huh, um, uh -huh. But there also then seems to be nothing to actually go back to, I suppose. Mm -hmm, it mm -hmm. was, uh, it was, could you talk a bit about, about this, um, maybe this, I guess, a, a nostalgia that's in the film as well? Or nostalgia. Nostalgia about what? About uh, well, it seems that he's. I mean, he's searching for. Uh, he's searching for something that was that was that he can no longer have of that. Mm -hmm, that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Whether it was not necessarily that luxury, or it was mm -hmm, that luxury mm -hmm. in a way, but there also seems to be as the film progresses this idea too that what he once had was actually nothing at all. Yes, yes. the thing is that uh, he's, he he. When he, he in, in the first part of the film, he, he is in the hotel and he wants uh, to find the, the time to return. But uh, in the end, he, he knows that uh, if he returns, 
many, if he returns now, um, he, in, um, how to say it, um, he has already lost everything. So there is a nostalgia, but uh, at the same time, it, it, there is a need to, 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 to be eternal. So he decided that the, the only way to be eternal is with not to return. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it's a very difficult uh, balance between uh, these two things. So uh, he, decide, he decides not to return in order to be eternal. Right. Mm -hmm. And it seems too that, or I suppose the, the question is there's nothing to actually return to in yes, what you were yes, saying yes, about this. Yes, this there is nothing to return. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, there is mm -hmm. nothing. And the title is pulled from Nietzsche. Nietzsche. Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes, yes. Could you talk about that a bit? Uh, yes, there is uh, this uh, phrase, this, uh, the eternal return. It is in Gay Science, the book of Nietzsche, the Gay Science. Mm -hmm. And um, it is about the absurdity of the life. Mm -hmm. So we turn again to the absurdity. Mm -hmm. Life is ab absurd uh, because uh, you return and you return again and again and again at the same time, at the same place, and uh, there is no end. Which and th that, that's the sense that there is no end. And that's why we we saw at the last scene the the Antonis to, to walk at this tunnel, which is the same tunnel of the first scene. Right. Yes, and yeah, it has that, yeah, that cyclical. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Um, and then is that not, uh, I mean, is, it, is that then pessimistic? Can this then actually, can this cycle ever be yes. broken? Yes, 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 it's something pessimistic. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It is absurd. <laughs> yes, yeah, I mean, I suppose taking it, it literally then is it is, there... It is uh, vain, I think. This is the right work. It is about vanity. Of... Can you expand on that a bit? Yeah. Mm, yes, it is something that um, you try and you try and you try, but uh, there is no... Uh, there is no end. For and you will always try and try and try. Is there then, um, because it, wait, is, is there then a sort of any hope then, if you're going to read this film, I mean, I think it asks to be read allegorically as well for, for what is, as you said, is for uh, contemporary Greek um, society. Mm -hmm. So is it hopeless? Yes. It's <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sorry, but for me, it's hopeless. <laughs> So then, then, then why, why keep making films if it's, it's, it's hopeless? <laughs> I just give up. <laughs> no, I think that uh, it is hopeless about, um, you know, uh, every month the prime ministers uh, say to the people so that uh, there will no, uh, be other taxes and uh, uh, trust me, there will not be other taxes and every month uh, other taxes come and uh, at the same time the people I think that um, don't change the, the way that they think. So from one part there is the government but from the other part there is the people. So uh, the thing is that um, if uh, one day we will we'll, we'll wake up and uh, somebody tell us that there is no crisis anymore mm -hmm. and that the crisis ends, I think that uh, we will, uh, um, we will um, uh, how to say it, we will return to our um, um, old uh, uh, way of living mm -hmm. and that uh, we will nothing uh, change. And then just repeat it all over Yes, again. yes. Yeah, and we will, do, we will do the same uh, things and we will do the same uh, wrong things. And then no, no, no lessons learned. <laughs> so um, it is hopeless. <laughs> this is so hopeless. <laughs> Great. <laughs> um, no, but, but then why, I, I'm, I'm really serious, if, if it is hopeless, then, then, why, then why, what motivates you to keep 
to keep making uh, film and art about this then, about, you know, it addressing it. It is the only it. thing that I know to do and mm -hmm. it is the only thing that um, I can do. So, for my position, it is the only thing that uh, I can do for uh, wake up the people. Mm -hmm. Wake up, okay. I don't believe that uh, there are many people who will who will who will who will my film, but uh, I have to hope. Mm -hmm. It is the only thing that I can do. So then you're not so, that pessimistic in the end. There uh, is some hope, maybe. <laughs> it's raining, so I'm just trying to find a nice happy ending. <laughs> okay, okay, don't be so pessimistic. Uh, but it is difficult. Yes, no, and I think, but I think this is, you know, this is a question in sort of, you know, all the kind of cinema that tries to, uh, that tries to, you know, to work against the grain mm -hmm. and does try mm -hmm. to actually mm -hmm. break mm -hmm. some kind of... of okay, but... Um, I don't know because um, my film uh, will have a distribution in Greece on January, mm -hmm. so I don't know yet uh, about uh, the reaction of the people. But uh, you have to know that, um, in fact, there is no audience for the Greek movies in Greece. Mm -hmm. That uh, the, the the Greek people don't trust the Greek movies. So they don't go to the cinema to see them. So I don't know how many people will really watch my movie. And um, <laughs> <laughs> I hope. <laughs> but, uh, well, and what do you mean by by uh, by don't uh, don't trust? Is don't the, trust them. Yes. Is uh, to to speak about this to speak about the crisis or just in terms of taste? No, or it just is. Um, something that happened before crisis. It is mm -hmm. not uh, because of the crisis. Um, I think that they found them uh, too arty. No one sees Canadian movies in Canada either. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, I think this is you know, a national problem of not... Yes, yeah. I think that it's not a Greek problem. Yes. I think that uh, mm -hmm. it is... Uh, it happens to all the countries. But yeah, I mean, your your point then too, if you're you know, if your film is is does have this kind of uh, you know a wake up call or a, you know a you know political message behind it too, then mm -hmm. yeah, this question of whether or not it will be seen and what then happens, you know, it adds it adds a certain gravity to to the question of, of audiences seeing it. Um, maybe. <laughs> Um, I suppose the other, um, and maybe this is a, a good place to, to wrap things up too, is the, at one point Antonio says, um, it has to become a legend and has to become mm -hmm, a, mm -hmm. a myth. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think that that line is, you know, encapsulates so much of, of, the, of the film, but then also speaks, I think, about what you're saying too, about, um, you know, the role of cinema as well. I wonder if you could talk about that, that line as well a bit. And about his need to be a legend. Yes, and maybe how, you, how that reflects on a broader, a broader level as well. Eh? If in, and how that might um, speak to a, a more a broader or a, a wider, um, more allegorical uh, message as well. Yes, for me, this <coughs> he, wants, he wants to be a hero. This uh, the important. He wants to be a hero because um, the idea is that uh, in Greece we have many heroes. We have many anci ancient heroes, we have many contemporary heroes, and uh, nowadays the heroes are the TV personas. So this is the idea. Mm -hmm. He wants to feel like a hero, and he wants to be a legend, so that everybody bef after his death will talk about him. Mm -hmm. It's about immortality. Mm -hmm. He wants to be immortal. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I'm glad I could make you say you weren't too pessimistic. I okay. Like I did my job. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're very kind. <laughs>